let's see what collective wants to come forward this week. Yeah, because we did the Pleiadians last week. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Okay. So, and there are um, Ascension Handbook. We are exploring the different collectives, and we had the pleasure of exploring the Pleiadian collective last week. Are there any collectives that would like to come in at this time? <laughs> saw all the collectives like I'm back on the spaceship and it's like I saw all the collectives and then I saw the plutonians like raising their hands like pushing towards the front like us 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 well this is exciting I never listened to the last one about the plutonians so I'm really excited to learn about you all oh you've never met the plutonians no <laughs> they come into my sessions a lot they're amazing <laughs> All right, our friends, the Plutonians, you have the floor. What would you like to to start off to tell us? Because I'm a little, I'm well, I'm quite ignorant, so it'll help me with my questioning if you start off with a little introduction. It's just so funny because I was like, I was expecting like the Lyrans or the Syrians. <laughs> um. Okay, so they're saying that Pluto plays an extremely important role in our evolution and our ascension. And uh, they came forward today because we were talking about astrology and Western astrology. Um, and we were just talking about the stars. And even though this is more astronomy, they're saying that Pluto is so important to us at this time. And it's very important. I mean, they're saying it is a planet. <laughs> I'm not going to second guess them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Carrie, just so you know a little bit. So the Plutonians, basically, they're so funny. They're like, um, I you saw the picture of my thumbnail. That's exactly how I see them. <laughs> um. And basically, I see them as, like, just pure observers. Like, they're just on Pluto with their popcorn, hanging out, watching the Earth show. <laughs> and they're very invested. Like, they're amazing to get perspectives on because they don't really care either way. Like, they're not emotionally invested at all. And they kind of have just a different way of being where they don't even really care about Ascension or anything. So sometimes if you need that outside perspective of just the observer, they're amazing to ask questions to. Now, do they have any of their um, collective here as starseeds? Are they completely removed? Who they said yes. Oh, they do. So what, uh, like, is there a certain area of the world that they sent their starseeds to or they sprinkle them all, all around? <laughs> it's showing me that it's almost it's like the people that just don't really care like the apathetic people where they're just kind of being and living <laughs> um they have a plutonian frequency like they're just here to live and have their own experience and they don't really care either way and they're showing me that they're, like, pretty spread out right now. It's almost like Plutonians came as, like, placeholders. <laughs> but they're still not emotionally invested in the Ascension. So do they They have a higher frequency? Like, are they a higher dimensional being? They are, but it's... <laughs> it's in like a completely different way. So we think of high dimensional beings as like this pure loving being, like it has to ascend. Um, they are higher dimensional, but in a completely different way. Like they're more focused on just the experience that they're in at that present moment. So they're very good at like teaching people presence. And these are kind of like the people in your life. And it's so funny because this whole time I've been so confused why 
the Plutonians like kept coming to me and they're telling me that my brother is one and it makes so much sense because my brother is like so apathetic <laughs> and I couldn't figure out like where he came from <laughs> <laughs> and they're saying that it's like they're almost here to like teach people presence and teach people to slow down it's like we um just need to appreciate the experience that we're in and we can still we can have this attitude of like not having to be so emotionally invested in what everyone else is worried in it's almost like they're helping to like they're that duality so there's like a lot of excitement of among like light workers right now so it's almost like we ask the, some of the plutonians to come in to be the duality of the excitement of like the I just don't care what really happens so that we still have this balance of it I mean I do appreciate that Plutonian aspect I appreciate people who are like that um because I can understand them I can it's easy to understand that now do they so those types of beings that the Plutonians that when they incarnate here they just don't play with the lower ranges of emotions at all so they still definitely are in their emotions it's almost just like it's they're more balanced in their emotions and they're saying that so there's not there's not that many people incarnated here but there are some right right um do they work with other collectives yeah so that is like there are some on the galactic federation um and it's kind of like the few that are on the galactic federation are the ones that convinced the other ones to come to earth even though they were happy just being observers <laughs> <laughs> like they were like do i have to <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. I mean, I understand. I always say I got voluntold to get, come here. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they're say, like showing me. <laughs> like they were happy. <laughs> right, right. Well, we appreciate that they're there. Why were they so excited to come forward today and kind of be the first ones? Because they want to talk about how important Pluto is in our ascension. Well, let's talk about it. Tell us about it. How important is it? So Pluto, when, and I don't know that much about astrology, but they're showing me that when Pluto is going through the different gates, like through the different astrological gates, it's that energy. Pluto's like that Scorpio energy that is bringing all of our darkness into the light. So um, it's so important for us to be aware of Pluto and being aware of like, where it's currently at in our astrological system or like uh, where it's at in our solar system and if we start tracking Pluto then it's almost like we can see um it's almost like we can see what's going to happen in the collective timeline because the collective timeline is directly related to the energy of Pluto and where it's traveling it in our solar system and it's like it's like they're showing me as Pluto goes through Libra that's going to bring up different things from the collective when it's traveling through Virgo that's going to bring up like our codependency and um like we'll feel ungrounded and things like that or when Pluto's going through Gemini, it's like our voice might feel shut down. They're saying uh, it's like Pluto's like that really important Scorpio energy that's bringing all of this darkness from the collective into the light. And they're like Pluto is one of the most important planets in the Ascension right now. And here we have been neglecting it. What do I mean? I'm I'm ignorant here. Why do people not consider Pluto a planet? They said because it's so small, like it was just kind of forgotten. Um, and then they're also saying it's like there are those few people where they didn't want us to know the importance of Pluto. 
And then they're also saying it's like you can be this small planet, but you can, or just because you're not as big as all the other planets, you're still so important of helping release this darkness of like helping others go into the darkness to find the light. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite uh, Bible quotes that I actually loved growing up as a kid was the this the tiny mustard seed grows to the tallest plant in the and so it just reminds me of that like even though you're this small little speck of a seed you can still make this great impact within the the field of life and um, now what do you guys I know that you have a thumbnail but if you guys can explain a little bit how you look. Yeah, it's like I see them almost as like little geckos, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they just are like they're sassy and they're present, and I love it. <laughs> and you're here for it. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you um, what are like their superpowers? Being an observer, like just being able to fully be an observer and they get really excited like they're showing me they love to show people pictures because they love that feeling of being in a movie or being like like that excitement of being in being involved in something that isn't really yours to be involved in Did the, I, the Plutonians invent Bravo and reality TV? Because I feel like it's up their alley. <laughs> yeah. Well, they said that um, Earth is their reality TV, like <laughs> their favorite show. And that's why they love to come on here is because they're so invested in watching the show that it's almost like when they get to come into our sessions, they're like, it's like, they called in and they're speaking to their favorite actor. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is a farce. Um, so how do they feel since they're objective and they're watching us? How do they feel like we're going? Like what, what do they really feel like humanity should be working on right now? <laughs> oh no. I asked. <laughs> <laughs> um they told me their superpowers it's like I saw this little gecko with like lasers coming out of its eyes <laughs> <laughs> uh, do they uh, actually have, have those superpowers <laughs> it's like I saw another little gecko like a uh, shoe like one gecko shot his laser eyes at another gecko and he started laughing and said of course <laughs> <laughs> um they're saying that right now is the time to practice and work with your spiritual abilities because um what's more fun and what would make this experience even better than unlocking your super superpowers right now. And they're like, that would make uh the show so much better if you walk into your superpowers right now. <laughs> so they don't really care about how it affects us. They just like it for the entertainment purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it. I, I love it. Are we all supposed to like, you know, there are the different, uh, you know, you can, you can hear, you can see the future, you have psychic abilities, all these different like clear audience, clairvoyance. Are we supposed to have all of those? Or do some of us like, just have a, like a couple of those that we're meant to have during this time? Yeah, so some of us just have more prevalent ones than others. But for the most part, once you step into that, you're also the co-creator. So you can start working with each spiritual ability. And if you feel like one's not your strongest, then you can start working with it to make it your strongest if that's what you chose. Now, I know that some channelers have said um, 
to be careful about which ear the information kind of comes in through, if it comes in through the right or the left. Does that even matter? <laughs> um, no, I think that person is just very clairsentient. You just have to be, it's like, I saw a gecko like whispering in my ear. <laughs> It's like, uh, you just have to be aware of who is whispering to you. Right. So it doesn't matter which side it comes in through. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I, I wondered that because just to check in, like, make sure it's of the good and not um, steering you in the different direction. Um, what do you love most about Earth? Like watching it? What is like, what are you guys into right now? <laughs> Okay, so it's like I see them watching like politics or um, it's kind of like I see them watching. So uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey is all over everything. Like I cannot escape it. And it's like I'm watching the Plutonians with popcorn and they're like, they're like, are people really going to believe this? <laughs> <laughs> like that's their favorite part is or like the uh, like the court case with Donald Trump they're eating their popcorn and they're like man are people really buying this like <laughs> it still amazes them and they're at the point where it's like almost like they're shaking the tv and they're like wake up but like <laughs> oh <laughs> oh my god and they're saying that it's good to be apathetic or like it's good to be apathetic in some things like it's a it's good to be apathetic in the in the sense that you're present, like in the sense that all that matters is the beauty of the present moment, um, like not worrying so much about the past, not worrying so much about the future. But there's also this line of like when it's infringing on your sovereignty and when it's infringing on the experiences that you came to have that's when it's important to like speak up and be in your sovereignty. And that's when it's important to like, um, when you honor like the Pluto energy, like that's when you honor the Scorpio within you and you help, a, a, you help others like go into the darkness so that we can bring so much light out of it. I love that. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about Pluto right now or your guys' help in the Ascension? They're just saying that the Plutonians have always been here. It's like this plan for Pluto to just like slowly, it's like Pluto, the energy around Pluto, and that's why it's the farthest away. It's like the energy of Pluto is the darkness that has been accumulating um, over and over while we're in the densest part of the Earth. And that's why it's so important that it be released right now so it's like we when we feel like we uh so when these things come up to us uh come up into our awareness to be released so like when I did that ancestral trauma release where I just felt this dark cloud over me for like three days they're saying like when you feel that way connect with Pluto and just ask Pluto to transmute it for you it's like transmuto tr transmuto <laughs> no, maybe that is what they told me they're like that wasn't an accident they're like call it transmuto <laughs> transmuto muting your energies <laughs> transmuto. <laughs> i love that um do they want more to have more of an interaction like can we encourage more people who are channeling or anything to tap into you guys to get some information and so you can have more of a direct connection with your favorite actors? Yeah, they got really excited and they were like, yes, like they start like jumping up and down. They're like, we would love it. <laughs> okay. And we'll be more mindful of tapping in with you guys as well. Um, that you guys don't have to push your way to the front. You can feel more like you're you're called down the aisle like you won a game show. <laughs> yeah, and they're saying that, like, they've always been around. It's, uh, I'm seeing a, a Plutonian, like, sit on the shoulder of a giant. <laughs> I love it, the Plutonians <laughs> and the giants. Atlas. 
Yeah, it's like they've always just been around observing. They're like the observers for the entire solar system. Or this galaxy. And and they report to other collectives the information. Do they ever share that information? They said, eh. <laughs> like, there, some of them do, but for the most part, they're just there, like, with their popcorn watching, like, the show. I would imagine. I would imagine that would keep you guys very entertained. It would be uh, nice to be a Plutonian for a couple lifetimes. I think it just would be relaxing. It's like, yeah, you know. Maybe, maybe after this lifetime, like if I leave Earth, I'll just go be a Plutonian and hang out with them. I mean, it it would be a nice R&R before going to the next mission. <laughs> Although I have a feeling your higher self's like, nope, that's not happening. <laughs> I All know. right. Well, before we uh, go ahead and close out this session, are there any final messages from you guys? I'm seeing there's something to do with the core of the planet. It's like the core of the planet is illuminated and it's directly connected to Pluto. It's really interesting what they're trying to show me. Is it magnetic? I mean, I can imagine it being the furthest one away and the smallest. That it keeps everything else like in rhythm, in time, in check. Um, almost like a clock, you know, where the numbers are. You have the, the dial has that center point, And then the outer rim of the clock has the little lines with the numbers. Like they all, I don't know. It just reminded me something of rhythm and check and time. Yeah, something about Pluto, the way that it cycles around Earth. They're showing me the Mayan calendar again, all the cycles of time. And it's like Pluto is that final cycle coming back around for the universe. You know how like in a safe when you turn the numbers when it's like a turn safe and each turn when you engage that correct number, it like unlocks another. Like, Is that what it's doing? Yeah, that's exactly what I saw. So when uh, when we first started this session, when I saw the pyramids aligned to Orion, that's exactly what I saw. I saw like a keypad. And then mm -hmm. it's like interesting that they're bringing this back in. It's almost like it's almost like Pluto is like the key to unlocking our cycles of time or it's like it's unlocking time for us. Or really, so like, they said it's releasing time for us. Releasing it. I can explain that a little bit more, friends. They said really pay attention to when Pluto comes back around and is near. The planetary alignment of Orion. And we did talk about Orion's belt with the Vedic, um, the pyramids. Yeah, it's so like that... it's like I'm almost seeing. So I'm seeing the three pyramids. I'm seeing like how they're aligned to Orion, and then it's like I'm seeing Pluto go around that, and it's almost like it's like unlocking. They're saying it's unlocking the cycles of time, and opening us up to new real i uh, i heard it's opening us up to new realities and like shifting the way that we see time and is that what helps evolution yes and that's why we have certain themes that we go through yeah and so when you see these collective themes of like the darkness that's coming up to the surface it's because Pluto is in a certain place in the stars. Okay. So what if Pluto's in alignment with certain um, like planetary systems that's that, like you said, could be um, unlocking a speaking our truth, unlocking like the darkness of like what that looks like. Um, that makes sense. That makes a lot yeah, of sense. Something like really important with the constellation of Orion though and Pluto. So I'll have to look into that. 
Is there anything they can help guide us to as to what we need to look into um, for that information? I'm seeing a picture of in the like the astrological chart with the angles and they're just saying like look at where like look at what sign it will be in during or when Pluto goes through it when it's like perfectly aligned to the Giza pyramids they're just saying it's like it's all coming back around so they're saying that um this time is so important for cycles because we have so many cycles that are coming back into alignment I'm really using my hands today (laughs) I keep hitting Mm -hmm. things (laughs) um yeah they're saying that there's so many cycles of time that are about to like perfectly line up so we have um so even like you could look at like knowledge as a cycle coming back around and I heard Billy Carson say this the other day where 12,000 years ago this is when we were introduced to a lot of this ancient knowledge and this ancient knowledge is just coming back around on its cycle and that's why we're so lucky to be here in this time is because um we're in the age where all this knowledge is coming back and we have access to it. So they're just saying that like, there's so many universal cycles. Like they're showing me that there's like a, a really important, like 144 year cycle. So we'll have to see what was 144 years ago. They're saying that there's a really important 12,600 year cycle matching up. There's a really important 52,000 year cycle matching up. And there's a really important like universal cycle matching up where it's almost like that's how the consciousness, it almost like represents a flip in consciousness for this universe. And that does that have to, does that have to do with like the split we've been telling about talking about? That is a cycle for Earth, but this is even bigger. This is like a universal cycle that's coming back around um, just for this universe. I love that. And so will they be affected too on Plutonian? Pluto. Pluto. (laughs) Never mind. (laughs) Transmuto. I still still love transmuto. That's amazing. (laughs) And immediately they were like, no, that's what we meant. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Um, will they be affected or are they in such balance that it won't affect them as much? Yeah. For the most part, like they're in such balance that it's all the same. They're like, we're here for it either way. (laughs) All right. Well, I have a lot that I wrote down and that we need to follow up on and, um, this is a lot of information that was very, very helpful. Yeah, um, I love them because they have the funniest perspective, but then they bring through, like, also information. Like, I feel like a lot of collectives are more careful about the information that they give you. But for the Plutonians, since they're observers and they don't really care, they're just like, we'll give you all of the information. <laughs> Yeah, and other collectives are like uh, worried about what we're going to do with the information. They're like, are they, are they ready for that? You know, and these guys are like, well, we don't really. Yeah, they're like, it makes the show better for us. (laughs) They're like, we just want to see them shoot laser out their eyes. So (laughs) I mean, this stuff doesn't really affect us. (laughs) I mean. Well, thank you so much, our friends. Um, And for, you know, today I felt like I really got a lot of good knowledge and that, you know, the, the collective that listens to this, the collectives that listens to these channels are going to get a lot of great knowledge. So we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. (laughs) 